Man, you come straight out of a cunt. Welcome to an episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. Yeah, hey, yo, this this is how it normally goes. Like, this is what happens when you get people together who enjoy comic books, who enjoy the blur culture, who just loves all of this stuff and is passionate about it and will represent. And so we back at it again. And this time, I I told y'all because I'm sick of this shit. We we own our DC stuff, all right. Facts. And so I made sure that I got two. Of I, who I call the DC ambassadors that they just ain't gave that check to yet, but these people here are going to be representing. And of course, we got CT Fantastic Frankie, and then we got the uh Blur Commander himself, Mr. Young Deuces, and we jumping into it. It's Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle time. Oh. Blue Beetle is out. Blue Beetle is in theaters, and I need to jump into the hot topic real quick. This, this movie cost $120 million to make. Mm-hmm. And it then only made $50 million so far. It's going to be a slow burn. I, I, like, I, 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 I want to jump in real quick. I just got to jump in. I, I, saw, I saw a lot of people trying to kill it for that. This movie is amazing. And ele- so I mean, the Elementals had the exact same opening. And then they went on and sold like $240 mil and everything like that and surpassed their budget. Because of this movie, and I think because of superhero fatigue, because of the track record that DC had, a lot of people wrote this movie off offhand. But everybody I know who saw it at that point is is changing their tune. And I do believe that this is going to be that slow burn that is going to pick up and pick up and pick up and pick up and it's going to hit his budget. I just want to address the notes that I got in the call sheet that said, are DC fans not showing up when we the only ones there? We so that's, that's, what I, so, 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 so that's what I want to add. That's what I want to ask because I, I'm not liking this narrative that they trying to push that yeah. DC fans don't show up. And that's why I wanted to have the two of y'all on here to really talk about that because I feel like that's not true at all. Yeah, so when comic book movies don't do well, it's not because the fans don't come. It's because yeah. the casuals don't come. There's not enough DC and mm. Marvel fans or Marvel fans, comic book fans in the world to get a billion dollars. You mm. need to, it needs to be your aunt, your sister, blah, 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 to connect. Um, we did. God, we I don't like her watching it. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. So I need y'all to leave us alone. We do it every right. we can. We fight it for our lives. Shout and out to the black also, woman. This movie had no promo, right? We're in the midst of the strike. And to compare it to stuff like Barbie and stuff like that, who got th- six weeks of Margot Robbie putting out the hottest fashion in the game, yeah. I couldn't get a, a car on hydraulics in Hollywood. Like, there was, we weren't allowed to promo it. Zola wasn't allowed to promo it. Influencers weren't allowed to promo it. So people are like, the numbers aren't doing good. Gee, I, I guess fucking why? Because, and also people <laughs> think... That we should be boycotting movies. People think the strike means to boycott movies. No, no, yeah. Right. Yeah, we're individuals with critical thinking, but the masses don't have that. So they're listen, like, the reason they think this is because when you have a, a group of people, you have herd mentality. When you tell people one, this is why they took so long to tell people about aliens. They waited to a point where we'll get no more, <laughs> which is great. But there was a time if you would have said that it would have been an apocalypse. It would have been pandemonium because if you yeah. say it's like playing a telephone game with mm-hmm. three billion people, it's like, hey man, we out of sugar. We out of sugar to one person and turns into the world is about to burn because of the sun once it gets back to me. So when you start telling people, hey, there's a strike, you can't promote movies, you can't promote TV shows, that turns into, oh, we can't watch that stuff? And it's like, why why the fuck would that even make sense? But to (laughs) your point, these are things that I have said for the past couple of weeks. Yeah, Man, he did not get a chance to promote this movie. He didn't get a chance to go on any talk shows and show why we should love him outside of Cobra Kai or the fact that he's right. even in Cobra Kai. And to be able to see the Cobra Kai people go with him to the premiere and make this big thing. And I'm going to tell you this, man. Purely off movie, that movie, Blue Beetle, and I told y'all that the count was six. And I'm going to tell you what that count meant. I cried six times in that goddamn movie. I cried. Hey, bro. Six times, man. Emotion, bro. And not even just not even just the eye water. I'm talking about glory <laughs> tears on both sides. I was like, hey. When, the, when Abuela gave that 
when they were sitting there mourning the loss, and Abuela Bruh. says, "We don't have time to mourn. We have work don't, to do." Yo, yeah, weeping so, in that, that theater, it. weeping. Mm. The, People I told- in front of me was like. <laughs> What's, that yeah. What's going on back there? And I was like, yeah. y'all don't get it. Yeah. They don't get it. Y'all don't I told get Will, it. I told Will this yesterday. I said that family aspect that Shazam was trying to create, <sighs> Blue Beetle did it flawlessly. Oh Flawless. my God. I, I, this felt like these actors felt like a true family together. I felt like I walked into my homie's family and I just said, yo, hey, this love here? Like, yo, this it was, it was family. Like, it was real, bro. I man. felt it. I felt it from... Man, let me tell you something. When the father, who is this anchor of the family, is telling him, like, yo, that's tomorrow's problem. Let's just enjoy mm-hmm. it. And he's keeping the family calm. And he is the one to get them young bullets, bro. So oh. him, I mean, him to uh, get the heart attack. So as soon as he died, it was like, damn, I'm already fucked up. And then fast forward, we're all out of order. We will get back yeah. to order. I'm just going to yeah. say this part that we go in your no, way. No, 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 but no. Yeah, yeah. when he appeared to Jaime, Yes. And said, it's not your time yet. He's like, what are you doing here? You know what I'm doing here. Yeah. Like, this gave us closure for mm-hmm. this boy to see his father and for his father to give him the courage that he needed, telling him, you were chosen for a reason. And he came back on some Super Saiyan shit. It was amazing, man. That and movie man, from beginning. Said, and I was the only black dude in the theater. He Loved said, it. I, I lived to give you this message. Mm. I am here for you, Mars, my son. Was, and you know what? I I love the family so much that I was audibly booing Jen, Jenny. <laughs> because what the fuck did she think was going to happen when she gave the scarab to Jaime? In no situation was he not, him and his family were not going to be killed or put in jail or put Touché. in imminent danger she didn't know that the scarab was going to connect with him but she said here is this multi-million dollar tech from this military private company mm-hmm. take it home well so you, you don't think there's a tracker on like here's the here's the thing that like I, as i was watching it i was like oh i'm seeing this themes that they like that that i wonder is anybody else put peep in it like that was that white privilege like her wow. mom if you look at everything like even with the scarab like she treated the scarab like a like you know what i'm saying like all right, you work for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even with giving old boy the power. She treated pretty much any non-white, if, if you was an alien life form, whether you was alien in the true sense of alien or alien in the racial term form, treated it like you work for me. So in her eyes, even with that giving Jaime the, uh, the McDonald's box, she didn't think about the repercussions because she still was like, oh, yeah, you know, hey, I'm just white. You know, I can do whatever. Like, that's she a was so missing blonde hair. Even she was Colombian. She gave, uh, I know she was Colombian, know, but I still I equated to her, her stepmom. Yeah, she, that white there, uh, y'all, I, I need y'all to let go of the shackles of <laughs> countries. Bra- there are white people in Brazil. She's white. Okay, she's, she's Brazilian, yeah, she's but white. she's white. She's white. She's white. In my head, all she needed was blonde hair. If she if she had blonde white. hair, when nobody had said mm-hmm. nothing, y'all have been like, "Yep, that's exactly." Well, here's the that. thing. Yeah, this is, is what I agree, but I felt that I agree with the <laughs> our thinking. Uh, they'll never. This is what I thought. They'll never suspect you because you just came here for a, an interview or a meeting. Yeah. You can get out without being seen. I do hear you guys' point, but I didn't take it like that when I saw it in the theater. I get why she would say they never suspect you, right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. she knows that shit is tracked. She didn't run out and meet him outside, walk outside, I'll meet you outside. That's the only way I would have been if she was looking for him outside. She mm-hmm. was going to link with him hours later. So I will, I will say the ba- the balance in that for both of y'all statements though is one scene where Jaime goes and they're trying to shoot at her. That lets me also know that you didn't fully think this through. Like you really think they right. wouldn't come after you. So that lets me know to the point of like there is that yo that white privilege, but also that nah. the intention is like to uh, TT's point. Nah, I ever. gave this to you for that. Even at the end, there was no <laughs> remorse. She she went to Theo. She was like, "Yo, I got your car back," and they were like, "Thanks." And I was like, "You know, they're all you know." He's like, "Say thank you." I'm like. She ruined his fucking car. Why is this a gift? This is not a gift. These are reparations. You destroyed my house. This got bombed. 
my my car I'm, is all because of you. You owe me. I will say that. Why why didn't she it. rebuild the house? Why didn't she? Rebuild well, that's the, the first thing I thought. Everything. You got time to get motorcycles and shit. Why isn't this house rebought, bro? Well, she said she said that they're going to rebuild it. They were yeah. Going to rebuild the house. I was thinking they should have moved her to the to, to the. Old I mansion. thought they were going to move into the mansion, bro. No, I, I think I think they want to stay in the keys. My family yeah, wouldn't want to move to that. the mansion. Yeah, yeah, they want to stay in yeah. the keys. I was fine with just rebuilding the house, but. All of this stuff she was saying, like, hey, y'all, hey, poor people, I'm mm. here to help you guys. No, hey, poor people, I owe you a massive debt. Massive let debt. Me, let me. <laughs> would it have been too shit? offensive for her? Would it have been too offensive <laughs> for them to move into the mansion and have a scene with them fixing it up? And this is why I say that. <laughs> Nah. This is why I say. This is why I say. Absolutely not. Listen. This is why I say. And I'm not being racist. I'm saying, this is how you set it up. Because if she would have asked, "Hey, could you guys do this?" It would have been offensive. But if she said, "Yo, you know, uh, would you guys? I would like to fix this house up." But while you wait. Why don't you guys come stay in the mansion? And then they're like, all right, yeah, we can stay there. And they look at the mansion and they're like, uh, need some work. And then she's like, well, you know, it's an old place. And the next scene, they've taken it upon themselves to do it. So not here's, them here's, being asked. Right, what's what's that that hold on, I gotta ask. Necessary though. Here's how like, it what's hit. the motivation behind that scene? What's the development? So this is how the, it hits. Go it, ahead. I, I got it, CT. This is how it hits. Same scenario that you said, right? But then you see her fixing it up, and then you see them like, all right, let let we let let us help you because you obviously ain't gonna be able to do this on your I own. Like that. It, it gotta be that. It gotta be uh uh it got not her action, it gotta be them volunteering, like, look here. No, you, I, I don't bet you that. that's the You're same thing. You I that bet you over fish. Need to clean. Absolutely no, not. The only no, thing I want to uh, see them no, doing in that mansion is no. putting up beads at the doorway. All right, that's all I want to see. If but, uh, they come in so, uh, and they say it looks whack in here and they're decorating, I let them go. But fixing up the mansion is a no go. Them cleaning, no broom. I didn't no say problem. nothing about cleaning. All I said what was fixing up me. Fixing Turn up me. Did you see that fucking mansion? I just see George it, Lopez's no, character no, no. doing it, something it, it to that room. And, That's what I'm, well, yeah. I didn't say that about cleaning. I'm talking about clean it. the structure. Clean it. <laughs> Y'all ain't shit. Wait, 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 was this too, is, it, is, this too, is this scenario too far then? If they would have went there and then all, most of the keys came to come help build the stuff. And then they all start living there. Is that I now mean, that, 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 that's to, to, to that's build too, this house? That's we can cut to the house being done. We don't need to see yeah, it. We can't, all right, we can't have meet me halfway. Meet me halfway. What if the house is already done in the next scene and you just see one dude walking away and be like, no, nice. I don't <laughs> they come up in the house, the house is clean. It's done. It's done. I don't want to see Okay, hey, okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What if they with a hammer? It's done. It's what, if they were cord, what if they were cord workers? What if they were workers from cord? And what if they were cord workers? workers? No, why they are you obsessed with this? They All right, what about this? The house. You cut to the house being clean. The the grandma is lighting a rosary candle. Uh -huh. a yeah. One of those. That's the rock, so I can't pull it up. But one of these <laughs> candles is getting lit. And that's it. I don't want to see nobody clean. I don't want to see anybody pick up truck with wood in it. We can assume that they have cleaned their system. What if? What if you off camera you hear somebody be like they do the whistle. Well, is that okay? Why Wait, do I, I just need to know the motivation? All right, so for you to add house. on yours, what if all right, cord cleans it up, but then when, when the family walks in, they like we gotta make it more home like and then you start seeing them bring in their stuff. Like they start bringing in like bring the inherited yes. stuff and start like turn it in, instead of just a regular mansion. Now we now we turn it in. That's <laughs> decorating. I could see. I'll let them decorate. Right. I'll let them decorate. Like I said, put up some beads. Those some candles. Because that brings the home aspect of like what right. Jenny was pushing. Like y'all have a home. Abuela is so praying. I can see that. She she's praying. She's walking around. She's throwing water. She said, "Let's make sure because the spirits in here are, are, are terrible." That's fine. Nobody's you, fixing up nothing. It's so, true. but you already, but, but this what you can't. This this what you can't escape. It's gonna be a garden truck out there. I don't care what you say. There's why a garden, garden truck. truck out there. Oh, it's, 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 why wouldn't it be out there? All that land. 
You know, you know, know it's no fair. I ain't saying who doing Why? it, because, but we because, know. Because it's already been established that this is a futuristic town. They got automatic robots cleaning up that landscape. She works for Cord. Why you gotta? That's, why you gotta the, bring that's in? The comment. That's uh -huh. the comment right there. The machines cleaning it up. If they, if there were any construction going, that's what they dressed in Cord machines doing it. That can yes. the, that's can the machine walk <laughs> off set and say, is that <laughs> Can the machine, hey, hey, can the machine they, play hey, music? Can the machine play music? Said, because in the atmosphere, the the music. Music. <laughs> yo, Kajita, start speaking Spanish. And, and George, yep, yo, George, on, on a real, that's the first thing I thought after seeing that movie. I was like, man, I'm so in love with Latin culture now. After yeah. this movie, yeah. I wanted to learn Spanish. I still want to. Like, I'm about to try to get into learning. I even hit one of my Spanish homegirls. I was like, hey, can you can you teach Spanish? And she was like, I don't know. It depends on how you learn. And I'm like, will you please teach me? She left me on red. So if you want yeah. to go to Duolingo, you straight out of a comment. No. <laughs> that can sound like we're about to go into an ad. That would be a great ad. <laughs> but That's what I really beautiful. like about that is that much like the comic books, it's in that same vein where it's like it's you're being dropped into the experience. It reminds me of the first season of Luke Cage. Mm. It's like, Ooh. get get with the culture or get lost, right? Yeah. So sometimes they didn't translate uh, what Abuela was saying in Spanish. You know, she mm -hmm. didn't say anything in English. A lot of the other characters spoke in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, they talked about, like, people being racist towards them and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it was like, you're watching this experience. And the comic books are the same way. They always release... Well, not always, but let's say for graduation day, they released the comic book issues in Spanish. And mm -hmm. then the ones that are in English, when people speak Spanish, they don't translate it. You got to Google that shit if you don't know. Oh, um, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. it's just in Spanish. And Kajita speaks Spanish too, Jaime. Um, especially when they're like having heart to hearts. Yeah. And I love that, that that's his love language. That's his connection. That's when he feels the most vulnerable. And I thought it was a perfect way to show how language, how family are all connected. Because, like, even when the Scarab um, went connected with him, fused with him initially, I was terrified for the family to see them react, to see how scared they must be, to see how scared Jaime was. And Man. then his first reaction was to go back home, right? Like, it, it was testing on him, but he was like, I got to get back home. And then they took him back home. And that's the foundation of Latin culture. There's no secrets. There are, you know, it's like. And that's what we talked talking about when we saw the trailer. Yeah. They're talking about food all the time. You know, they gave, are, they gave us a good the dinner temple. That, yeah, this is what it felt like to me watching this film. Yes to everything that Frankie just said. My cherry on top of that is looking at this movie. And seeing something because, you know, as we all, I think we all have the exact same knowledge of Blue Beetle from Young Justice, Justice League, Smallville. Like, there has never been an iteration of Blue Beetle where he's ever fully merged with the, with the Scarab, right? Yeah. What this film did was it's, it showed that journey. And it gave us the ending of, all right, now they are one. Yeah. And now, as he speaks the scarab understands and, and vice versa. And now they're truly a team. It's almost on some venom shit. Whereas yeah. compared to how it used to be, which was he never understood how to do it. And that was the comedy of Blue Beetle. They were never fully merged. Yeah. So Blue Beetle would just do something and he'd be like, oh, what was that? But I love the fact that they made it to where he is now in control. And there's one, like that felt so good to me because I'm like, this is story progression. Now Blue Beetle is a legitimate hero as he gets older. Cause I was, I was kind of upset about that because, uh, how do you say his name? Is it Sholo or Solo? Zolo. Like Zolo. Zolo. Yeah. What is he? Thank you. So when you see Zolo play this character, you're like, all right, he looks young enough to play a 16 year old kid, which is how old Jaime is. But right. when they made him 22, I'm like, okay, so he graduated already. How is this going to be? But he's still kid like. I yeah. love that because now you show that this character can grow and be a true man. And then yeah. finding out that Ted Cord is still alive, it's like, oh, bro, I need the yeah. sequel ASAP. And then um, to go back to the in the comic thing. books, though, he is he is fully fused. Like yeah. sometimes Kajita, like 
acts up like in graduation day mm -hmm. Kajita is on the fritz but they're fused um and they're like connected and they work together yeah and so Thank to go you. back to, to go back to something that Frankie had said and something that we talked about during the trailer is that comic book trope of trying to hide your identity from your family. I love that this whole movie was all about one person in the family getting the powers, but us as a family approaching this and attacking this and addressing this and dealing with this. Because like I said, what Frankie said, once the scarab attached to him, Jaime, his whole thing was let's get back. And even in, like I said, we talked about how strong the pops was. Even during that time, he's like, look, we've been through worse. We can handle this. Like he he kept on saying that in different scenes. Like, no, nah, we going to handle this. We going to handle yeah. this. And so it's like even the, the, the height of the movie, it right. wasn't. It wasn't Jaime versus the bad guy. It was the family versus the bad corporation. It's like, I love that. And then the last thing I want to say, based off of what CT said, to me, we've saw, we've gotten so much superhero movies that we've mm -hmm. seen the tropes. What they did in this movie, Marvel most likely would do in three movies. Mm. At this point, like DC took the they took a liberty of you know what, let's not give this whole he doesn't know, he doesn't understand, and give three movies, and then the third movie he finally full yeah. high me. It's like, no, let's connect that because there's still more to the story that he can uh, evolve to. So I love the fact that that the pacing seems different already. In you ready DC. for this mic drop? Uh oh. Now we all know that there are other scarabs. And this is what I love about certain intros of movies. If you see the intros of this movie, they show you that there are like seven scarabs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this blue one happened to come to earth. My, you know, one of the biggest foes for blue beetle is red beetle. I mean, yeah. uh, red beetle and black beetle. And then green black comes beetle. in black beetle. When I saw this machine steal power and turn into essentially red beetle. I was like, come on, bro. <laughs> no, this is not how this is going to be. And they got rid of the character because mm -hmm. they killed him and they killed Susan Sarandon's character. And I was like, oh, this is now one of my new favorite comic book movies because you didn't sacrifice one of his villains by making it like a copy and paste. Like, oh, let's just create something out of that. It was like, he still exists on another planet in another universe and we're going to yeah. bring him but they did not cheapen it and that made me an even bigger fan yeah even, even the reason why he stopped fighting i was about to cry i was like Damn, this, is, Bro, this is anime level it reminded me of an anime <laughs> when they look into your eyes like demon slayer and they'd be like yo this guy's life is hard let me but tell you the story to, exactly that goes back to the fact that he's latino and community yeah. mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. be because in the same way that we saw in Spider Into the Spider Verse, where all the black people came together to yeah. help Miles get out of that situation, um, I don't know this actor's name. I just know him as Guillermo in um, What We Do in the Shadows. But the the, the, the big guy, guy, yeah, 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 him and and the one who was supposed to be Red Beetle, they connected because they're like Latino and they see how they're talking. They call they see him being called Jamie and shit like that. And they're like, you know what? Like, I feel you like my, life, my <laughs> name <laughs> is not <laughs> Sanchez. So, <I> was like, <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's really big. And I did want to address one thing you had said earlier, um, because Ka uh, Kajida and Jaime are connected. He, he bleeds into like um, Green Lantern territory. And that's what makes him so interesting yeah. because it then becomes what he can imagine to create to like stop it. Like sometimes Kaji does like, let me do this because you want to subdue it. But you even saw him. You didn't he like create the sword from like Final Fantasy? Like, okay, I yeah. thought I was tripping. I thought I was tripping. Like, Twenty two, right? Frankie, can you move in like tomorrow? Like, what is your schedule? Oh, right I thought right? you were gonna say, Frankie, you're out of frame again. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you can't be this dope. The I immediately thought Green Lantern. I was like, oh, anything he could imagine? This, like, I was being taught things that I thought I had already known, but your comic book knowledge far exceeds what they've given to me animated-wise over oh, yeah. the past 20 years. But that, <laughs> continue your point, but that to me was so dope that they're teaching without making it seem like you're spoon-feeding me knowledge. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's that's how they bled into the, the lore and yeah. high main learning. And that's what I liked, is that they evenly paced him learning and letting us understand that Kajita is also self 
automate it, right? So wherever he faltered, she was going to naturally, I, I'm calling her she, they, they were going to naturally. It's a she. Um, it's a she. It's a she? Why? Yeah, it's yep. a she. Uh, shout, hey, gonna, shout out to Becky G for talking about her. Yeah, no, nah, you're not going to go yeah. into gender politics of an alien. Uh, <laughs> Becky G was the voice. Huh? Becky, G, Becky G was the voice of it. Becky G so? was the voice of it. That's why so her. No, nah, nah, that's that's a woman. So we get, we're not doing that. That is a woman. Clicking beard is the voice of Luffy. Is Luffy a woman? What? Who's clicking it's, beard? That's a very interesting. Colleen, name. Colleen it's anime. Is the oh. no, okay, so 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 anime so, voice actress. Okay, so Venom. Venom is Venom a him or is he a they? Is Venom a him or a they? I want to say they're a they, uh, and that's why they was. Well, I mean, if we're being political, we got to wait. Venom, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The, if we are being political, we got to wait till they tell us. We can't. We can't give them that. We got to let them tell us. I, I definitely think Venom is non-binary, and that's why they <laughs> ran up to San Francisco, got them a little a twink when it was breaking up with Eddie Brock. You talk about in the movie. And the movie is definitely non-binary at the very least. <laughs> at the very least. We are way off the rails here. We are looking at a we gay know, romance is what I, I saw know, in that movie. Turned on. I don't know I'm sorry. We, 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 I could talk about it all day. That wait, gay story that we talked about. Wait, wait I wanted to... Before. CT, you said something that made me think about something, and it's probably why they didn't go to the, the, the heavy, I don't understand this power and I'm fighting with the scarab, because... Mm -hmm. And, it, and again, it depends. I don't know what they're going to do in this universe, but that is also a storyline that um, Cyborg goes through with the mother box and his tech. So right. like, I'm wondering, like, if because yeah, if they would have did that here, and then at some point we get into the whole mother box saga, and you do deal with that, it would be more the same. So they might be saving it for that. But like, I didn't even think about it that way, like that. But yeah, well, keep keep in mind, the mother boxes. That's possible. dead. That's gone. I well, want that, you to know that, that right okay. now. Even if Cyborg comes, well, we don't know what they. We don't know what Cyborg is going to be in this universe. Absolutely. No, this is what I'm saying to you. That's gone. There is no everything that was Snyder except for the two movies that made a billion dollars as far as character. Well, well, hold on, well, are yeah. gone. You, you have to be, wait, hold on. Yeah. The mother box doesn't have to be just only Snyder. Yeah, Listen. he didn't invent the mother box. Like I'm not saying, God, you're jumping, you're jumping. I'm trying okay, to. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are becoming very people-ish. I'm telling you. They so excited. They so, they so excited. And you should be. I'm saying that the story that we know we're getting during the next 10 years, obviously oh, yeah, after the yeah, strike, yeah. it's probably going to be 11, yeah. uh, is not the story that he's creating. So Mother Box, definitely don't doubt that it will be mentioned. I'm talking about heroes like Cyborg. I'm talking about unless they're going to keep... Um, Ezra Miller, stuff like that. These are all oh, yeah, Hollywood yeah, yeah. political he, things. But yeah, storyline wise, yeah. the way that James Gunn said it, he's like, Blue Beetle is a part of my story moving forward. Yeah, so, he said it's a start, right? Exactly. So him, Wonder Woman, uh, we don't know about Aquaman yet. And he's like, it's up to the Flash, which I don't I doubt that they would even let him come back now. So everything's restarting. So it's like we don't even know if we'll get anything up. we don't even know if we'll get Hal Jordan or John Stewart yet. True, true. Let alone no, I mean, outside no, of the green. Are we getting hell? No, no, no. I'm talking what's his name? Uh Nathan Fillion is playing um he's playing the OG Guy uh, Gardner. Yeah Guy Gardner. Guy yeah. Oh yeah he's not playing yeah, oh, Hal Jordan. That's so, much better. It is because I was about to be pissed. I'm like, hold on, man. He's he's <laughs> giving it up. I'm, I'm actually way better with yo. I thought he was playing Hal. No, that no, actually no. is way better. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see him as Guy Gardner. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. But I have to say, even if they do do Cyborg, it's a totally different experience. Oh, no, it is. Yeah. I was just saying just that, that small part, that that small part of this this tech is uncontrollable. Like, I was just saying, like, it, when CT said that, I just thought about, like, Cyborg also goes through that, and I don't see them rehashing that twice. So, but even even with Cyborg, even if they redid that uncontrollable narrative, it's going to be completely different because yeah. it's not that it's uncontrollable, it's that it's insubordinate. Right, um, right. so it's it's that the motherboard box don't like cyborg. He's like, what, why am I here? You, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a hostile environment. Yeah. Person timing, like he's trying to he got a new car, he's trying to test out this car. <laughs> like, Frankie, I got a question for you, Frankie. When did you get cute in life? Here's why I'm asking. So when you back up your vast knowledge of comic books and science fiction, and I see the Funkos in the background, I'm sure you see the Power Rangers in the back of mine. At what point? 
did you get cute where people were like, hey, yo, and you're like, oh, me? Like, at what point? Mm, maybe call it. I don't Got know. It. I had peaks and valleys. I'm not going to hold you. I had peaks and valleys. Um, yeah, I guess consistently would be college. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was already done by then. You already knew everything you knew. I, mean, you know, I, I think it, it's more than my looks. It's just like my dad is really into it. What? So that was definitely how oh. I got connected. Like he's you know, DC as well. He he's a DC guy for sure. Yeah, but you know he when I. I don't want to say my age, but around the time I was born was the rise of Milestone. So, you know, that's what really brought him to not the rise of Milestone, but the purchase of Milestone. So that was really what got him into D.C. and really yeah. brought me in. But also I live in New York. So like Gotham is New York City. And Facts. Like, you know, that type of stuff. But yeah, we would go to conventions and that's what conventions used to be. It used to only be the comic book artists um, and writers and like fans debating, talking to them, voting on shit, like doing things like that. Yeah. Um, Here's the thing, though. When to go to a point that you made earlier, where the fans are in these seats, the casuals are not. Here's the issue that I have with this, though, because fans generate a lot of money. Like we wouldn't have these collectibles that we that we purchase if we weren't spending the money. And word of mouth is the best marketing ever. Like that's the reason John Wick was even able to get a sequel because it, it bombed in the box office. It did better video on demand. So how is this film, word of mouth usually takes about two days. So how is it now Wednesday and this movie has only made $50 million? Everybody oh, who I saw see it, I know loved blue beetle so that's because twitter um, as much as people want to say that twitter is just twitter is online mm -hmm. what twitter has did is it's given a lot of people to be confident in confident in they wrong right so mm -hmm. right now the narrative is dc is trash it's only marvel right and so there's mm -hmm. people who don't even give dc a shot that they standing on it without even watching it so to what you to what you and what you and Frankie is saying is exactly the truth. What happens is our fandom and the way that the world is now, our fandom is so big that we are telling the people that we love, yo, man, and Thanos is doing this and Batman is doing this. So now the people that we love who don't know shit about this because they see how much we love it, they're like, well, shit, I want to be I want to be with you on this. I want to mm -hmm. have this love. And then they get introduced to it. But then what But what happened was now the people that we love, they don't, we don't introduce them to our world. So now mm -hmm. they feel a little bit more confident. And they're like, oh, well, I'm also with Twitter. DC's trash. And so as mm -hmm. much as we like, yo, man, yo, this is, yo, this is bringing DC back. Yo, this is a good start they like well but the twitter told me dc trash and now they taking a hard stance and it's like we in a weird space where twitter has infiltrated real life people's mm -hmm. thinking and now they just standing on like oh well this is what they said so now this is what it is and it's like no change that shit where True. us as comic book heads we know that we know a bad run doesn't mean the end of a franchise right we know that bad run is just like just a bad run but wait until we get somebody that fuck with it like james gunn so you know yeah that's how I feel. But it also, also it reflects that too because what I noticed was this movie did not get as many uh, theater openings as Barbie did. Like when I went oh, to go purchase that ticket, yeah. If you notice, like normally they will have like it for every hour to mm -hmm. show. Blue Beetle did not get that, and so I don't know if that's from DC side or what. But I noticed I was like, yo, it did not have as many uh, theater openings as a Barbie did. And I'm just like, yo, why is that? Why did it get as yeah. it get a uh, I mean, Bar Barbie was Warner Brothers. Like, that makes sense, right? Barbie was like their, um, what's the word? Like their signature for the year. So they would, of course, like release that in every single theater versus Blue Beetle, who by the time they were ready to release, they knew because of the strike they wouldn't mm -hmm. be getting any promos. So, like, yeah. it, it would make sense for them to reduce the amount of theaters to cut that cost down. And that being said, beyond Twitter, we're not talking about it. And that's yeah. what I mean, right? The influencers who we had a lot of, you know, we not review quitters, but we not breaking down that movie. Why do people want to watch that movie if we all not talking about it? Well, yeah. as, the only reason I'm not talking about that movie and a couple other movies is because obviously I'm in, you know, the actors union and, you know, writers on all of that stuff. But 
as a social media content creator, I'm like, ah, this is breaking the rules if I do this, but Dang. I want to, you know what I mean? I want, I want to say, there's so much that I want to say about this movie, and because I'm trying to be in this industry, I'm just like, I don't want to seem like the scab. So it's like, it's a, it's a lot of inside that's fucking with it that we're trying to find out, trying to find that path. But like, I also like, I feel like also wanna um like they also didn't have faith in it. So one thing that I was like I start trying to like gauge is like seeing like how things flow, like mm -hmm. promo things that happened before. What threw me off where I was like I feel like they they don't even have faith in this. I don't know if it happened in y'all theater, but in my theater this is a DC property. I get it that is it's supposed to be family and everything like that, and it has a little bit of edge, but it's still family. And the trailers was like. Paw Patrol, and then they showed The Nun too, and I said, I feel like this does not go with the theme of this movie. I don't know if they did that Yo, they threw a Google. They threw a Google commercial in the Yo, trailers. The I ain't were, never seen a regular commercial in the, the kids, line of movie trailers ever bro, in my kids life. Was crying. Kids was boo-hoo crying before the movie even started because of that Nun trailer, and I said, this feels like it's like it's not connected. I, you like show me other family stuff like I, and i just felt like i felt like the powers that be even the the reporting i didn't see any like james gunn and people went harder for the flash than i saw other people speaking out for blue beetle and i'm like why yeah. like i didn't see no well, i didn't see no well, big major head well, like yo blue beetle well, that, like, that, go, that, that go back to frankie though because that shit costs a lot of money and they was trying to make that back blue beetle, <laughs> only cost, blue, blue beetle cost 120 to make and they made 50 here so if yeah. it go worldwide they can at least make it back flash cost a fuck ton of money uh, yeah yeah but also getting back to the movie I definitely want to see. Uh, I want. I want to know Bella's backstory. I want to see her going against the communists and everything that she. Bro, she was a soldier. Bro, the way she was, she had that rail gun going. I mean, uh, that machine gun going. The, the point of that is to research it yourself. I know. I know. That's I know. why they mentioned it. I like this. I didn't know. I definitely, like did. I definitely did. I definitely did. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm but saying, I like, it. as a character, she jumped off the screen so much that I also would like to see more on screen of her. <laughs> I was terrified she was gonna um, get a heart attack too. I was like, y'all gotta just uh, get heart I, well, they go, Hopefully, <laughs> what we learned from Black Panther two is the <laughs> the difference in storytelling because in Black Panther two we were like, all right. Chadwick's gone. There's no way they're gonna get rid of. It. Oh my god, they got rid of that best. Like that threw everybody off. Un but unnecessarily too. Unnecessarily, she, she did not need to go. To go. But that movie, Blue Beetle, seeing, and this goes to your point, Frankie, about researching things. The level of Latin love this film was made with. Mm -hmm. This is this goes to show you if you just allow people to do the projects that they want to do. Mm -hmm. It will come out perfectly because when you look at uh, a black film or a Latin film or an Asian film, and it's just our people, it's amazing. But once they try to say, oh, you got to add this, you got to serve this community and add this community. No, that's going to ruin the vision. If white people can make these period piece movies where ain't nobody of color except for them. <laughs> back in the 50s to the 1800s then let us make our black latin and asian and indian yeah. movies that that's another reason too i think this this movie may have been played down the way it was because i'm gonna still argue this and debate this i'm gonna tell you why this had to be probably one of the best superhero movies that's been put together since let's iron hear it. man let's hear it. it's because they gave us a phenomenal pace to start off with. We didn't yes. go, we're going to throw the entire DCU on you. We're no. going to tell your story in your world. Not only are we going to tell your story in your world, we're going to sprinkle little bits and pieces just to get you prepared. Like when he came to talk to his dad and you saw the Gotham Lord hoodie that he was wearing. You started letting us know about what was in here. The things with even the f former Blue Beetle to let us know like, hey, this ain't yeah. just it just got here. He's been here. This is how we're yeah. tying this in. That's how this one is going. Y'all have set a phenomenal pace to give us not only a great superhero movie that you could watch by yourself that doesn't need to be connected if you didn't want to, but also you set it up perfectly to where you can give us characters that 
aren't in the top tier, like the, you know, like the Holy Trinity that also mm-hmm. gives us substance. Cause like you said, even from the Latin part, the biggest thing that I took away was when uh, George Lopez uh, put the feed up and he played uh, El Chaplin, uh, uh, Colorado. Yeah. And they did the short for, and they did the short stop for him first. And I was like, Whoa. Whoa, and then, you know, like that's the red grasshopper and stuff like that. So I'm like, if you know it just a little bit about that, that was like the tick before the tick. And yeah, so I had to look like, that up. Yeah, to see them be able to like really show all of this, to throw all those elements in there, that's what I need to see because that's what I felt like uh, Cap, uh, Cap uh, Falcon was missing. We didn't have mm-hmm. that structure there. You didn't show us all of that. That's the same way I feel about uh. Uh, Bucky stuff the same way I feel about uh, War Machine it's like y'all threw them into this main story but you didn't give these characters who we don't know too much a good structure and even to yeah. like moving on I don't necessarily need a Blue Beetle sequel because if, if if we do it's cool don't get me wrong but you set it up to where wherever you now place him in his that timeline will be good because the older he gets, the more we see he's connected to the Scarab even more. Yeah. What new powers he might be having with this and where to really put him to where we can start even getting to that Young Justice live action type of feel because we I would feel love like that. That's what that's yeah. yeah, I, I would love, love a that. Young Justice live action. But here's the thing. In order for that to happen, you got to get the Justice League right. And that's something they didn't do. Like As much as I do appreciate Zack Snyder for having a love for the Justice League, his vision for his version was not what was needed at the time that we got it. Because in actuality, Christopher Nolan should have been the one to build out the the DC Justice League world. However, I'm to, uh, follow me here. However, because he was more interested in making a grounded Batman character more so than going into the lure of this is why it became hypocritical for me with Christopher Nolan. He wanted to build this Batman story that was grounded in reality. And this person can be Batman and that person can be Batman because Batman is an idea. You don't want to do the true story of Batman showing his actual villains and somebody like a Robin because you don't want it to be too cartoony. Well, sometimes a lot of DC stuff is that way. But mm-hmm. then the the, hip, uh, the hypocritical part of it was your name being on Batman versus Superman. And the first scene of Batman versus Superman returned us to the comic booky, cartoony atmosphere of these fucking bats raising this little boy through this will. Yeah. So if you show that you can be in this world, then you could have given us the world that we deserved 10 years prior. Let me tell you something. Tell me. Christopher Nolan does not give a fuck about Batman. And I love the the Batman movies. I get why you would would think about him and be like, no, he could make a DCU. Absolutely not. He was like, Batman is cool. My boy, me and my boy Hans Zimmer about to make something fire, but he had absolutely no intention of connecting it to a bigger universe. And honestly, I don't think that he's the type of director to want to do that, period. So we can get that out the mic. Second of all, <laughs> yeah. Batman being an idea is a point of Batman, right? There's many people, right man, a black, a black man is just Batman. Like that's yeah. always been a thing. And actually there's a comic book, a short, Ryan, it's like six issues you should read. It's called We Are Robin. And oh, it's about Robin. like Batman's dead. It's kind of like Gotham Knights if you've ever played that. Batman's mm-hmm. dead. And Gotham is like obviously going to hell. So a bunch of people come together as Robin because Batman is a symbol, but Gotham should also is a second character in the Batman mm-hmm. story. So this is the Gothamite saying, How do we rise up? How do we assist in Batman's thesis in his manifesto? By being Robin, by being his assistants, and they all like the gear is fire. That, you guys that's that one where all of them they got the picture with all of them in a group and they like lunging and stuff, right? Like kind of like they yeah, they all are like yeah, you know, they're wearing like different types of yellow, green, and red, but they're yeah. wearing like streetwear. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a bunch of cosplayers doing casual Robin cosplay. Yeah, that's the one. Um, I saw. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's yeah. I saw that. Is, like a black guy. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a, it's a solid run, but you know what I realized too, like what and, you realize. It, it's one of my issues that I've had with people when they jump into like the world of live action, turning like a comic book or a graphic novel or stuff like that. 
I don't like the the grounded approach because my thing is this is like there's certain shit that you need to lean into the fantasy, the the comic book aspect of it, the the ridiculousness of it. Like if th there's no way that you rate you read or watch any Batman property and you're and you come out and you say, let's just ground this whole thing because you have characters like Mr. Freeze, which is like, that's not a real character. You have the Joker, which that like this oh, person, should not be, like, like this, right. these are people that like you can ground them. But there's aspects that's going to be far fetched that you got to be able to lean into that you cannot exclude. That's what. I, so it's like, yes, you can still have grounded <laughs> elements, but you can't um, you can't go 100 percent grounded. You cannot. You uh, it's, it's not going to be. I don't know. It's not going to be amazing. So okay. So for the recent one, the Batman. Would you say that was a pretty grounded Batman? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The one with Robert still, yes, but they still had elements that wasn't so grounded. I'm saying that that's it. What I'm saying is you what, can't go what, full what, grounded. What, you got to. No, have no. I'm just, I'm just yeah. I'm just trying to catch what how how you're coming with that. But so could you give me an example of? What was one that was still kind of far fetched in the Batman? Just so I know, like, what level of like far fetched you going for when it comes to a grounded movie? You know what? I would I would have to go I I, I would have to go back and list it out because now that I'm thinking about it, like they because like because I when, I can see because remember we talked about a grounded Mister Freeze to where it wasn't so over exaggerated. We talked about it to where he true, true, uh, but I'm wife, saying like. Wife, his Go wife ahead, was finish. already sick. Yeah, his wife was already mm -hmm. sick. His plan with the water being run, how to freeze that, actually making a weather machine that would freeze everything over to mm -hmm. the where point to where, you know, like you say, it's still slightly kind of far fetched, but it has that grounded realism to it. I think that right. is still there. It's just really how you tell it. Because to me, the first ones that really got it that had that that good balance but never get its credit for it is Watchmen. I think Watchmen mm -hmm. should be a real format of how DC continues to make movies. Bright color so, type yeah. films with blood all over it. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I say, like, I guess the, okay, so now, yeah, now that I'm remembering, like, so like that whole final battle, that whole flood and everything like that, like, that's something that would not really happen, right? But you still have that where it turns out really awesome and everything like that. And even we talked about Mr. Freeze. We talked about him freezing over Gotham and and freezing it. Like it's stuff like that where it's like you can't cut that out. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta have those elements. Hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you just say it's not realistic for a dam to explode and water flood the city? No, he no, no, that, not that know, part. Not, that's, no, that, no, that's that's no, no, Katrina. Not that part. Like I said, the I said okay. the battle, that whole fight, that whole like that's not gonna happen in real life. Niggas hanging from the ceiling, shooting guns while while it's flooded, and like I don't think that. Where, what example has that happened? That yeah. was the most realistic for that <laughs> scenario. This no, what, no, grounded no, is scenario. for this scenario. This being possible, what's not grounded in any form or fashion is a Winnebago going over a cliff and you running up the Winnebago. I'm talking about Fast and Furious. So okay. when you look at a comic book movie. Okay, I wasn't talking about that type of... I'm, I'm just giving an example. But so I see, I see y'all I see y'all. When right. we talk about the Batman, the characters, honest, honest to goodness, the only character off the top of my head that I can see not being able to be grounded is Poison Ivy. And that's because she literally turns green and she controls plants with her hands. I don't know how you could groundedly display that. You could display Mr. Freeze. You could display Bane, as they've shown. You could display uh, Penguin. You could even display Cat. Like, they've shown how you can make these characters grounded. But the only people you would have a hard time okay. with. I, even I, I, think, I think we're misusing grounded here. Because, like, when you're saying grounded versus realistic i think they're two different things so like to You're say right. something isn't grounded isn't because they're doing something ridiculous you're already watching a superhero movie right right we're already breaking past what reality can be unless mm -hmm. you're watching something like the punisher that's the only yeah. uh, you, you know like that type of superhero but if you're into batman unless you cast it to falcone and all them there's no way you can stay ground. Um, you can stay realistic. I think that's more right, what I'm talking about. Right, but you yeah. can be grounded and, and still feel that. And I think I, that's what I really like about James Gunn. That's what I like about Peacemaker. Right, it was both. It yeah. was real. It was grounded, 
but it was ridiculous. And Ooh, I think that's, I loved it. that's mm -hmm. what you yeah. need to balance. And it doesn't have to be quirky and funny. That's what I like about the Batman. Yeah. Because there were a lot of scenes that broke reality, right? Because it is, you need that, right? Him um, injecting himself with, um, ah, what was it, Venom? The stuff that Bane uses, right? Yeah. So yeah. that he yeah. could get a final, a final um, boost in that last fight. Like, things like that is what's really going to push what Batman is because yeah. he can't just be realistic and be beaten up and then be a billionaire playboy in the daytime. I don't um, need any more comedy in my in my superhero films. Like why not? here's the thing. You don't like to laugh? This is what I mean by this. I don't need all I don't need to quip every sentence. Iron Man one was funny because Robert Downey Jr. is funny. When you look at films that the character is funny, you're like, oh man, because this is natural. This actor is funny. When you start trying to manufacture the funny is yeah. where I get annoyed. So when we look at the Marvel films that have gotten so ridiculously silly just to be silly is because they're trying to recreate. It doesn't take a genius to see. They're trying to recreate and find another Iron Man yeah. that they could pay for the, a lower the scale. The, the Adam West erasure is crazy right no. now. And I will not stand for it. DC Comics is funny. That's I'm not, not saying funny. that it's not funny. I'm talking about slapsticky. I'm talking about Thor four had some very yeah. funny moments. The the the, the, the George, uh, George Clooney erasure is also crazy. Listen, no, no, no. We acknowledge that. We know we, we're we, acknowledging all of this, but that's not where it got. We were still children when the George yeah. Clooney Batman and Robin but came it, out. It's it still impacted the way movies came out. So Iron Man being quippy is coming from old. DC no, movie. I'm not talking about derivatives. I'm not talking about origins. I'm talking about when we put together a comic book movie mm -hmm. and your thought is to add more jokes yeah. instead of action and story. That's what I'm talking about. If you're not focused more on your actual arc of your protagonist and your antagonist and making sure the duality and the balance is there compared to you making a joke, that's what I'm talking about. I'm yeah, not talking yeah, about so like, yeah, just so like comedy. Yeah, so like for Thor, when you see Thor Ragnarok, Thor still had Thor had that great mentality that mm -hmm. taught him to be funny. Mm -hmm. When Thor came out, you intentionally tried to make him be a joke. You tried to yes. make him make fun, do things like even to like Blue Beetle. It was funny watching these people react. And their yes. personality makes yeah. them naturally funny, not you trying to get us to go for it. Like right. you right now, like how, how yeah. coming to America too was you went to try yeah. to make <laughs> jokes. Instead yeah. of it just being these people are naturally <laughs> funny in the game, and I, all I, I, I saw that coming. Yeah. But wait, just, his phone, hold on, because right now in the MCU, every like Thor, Star Lord, fucking um, uh, Iron Man, like everybody is the exact same as far as personality. They all giving quips every other line. They're all trying to crack jokes. They're all trying to be the, 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 the suave, sexy man, but who says some funny shit every now and then. And I'm just like, I'm over that. Cause it's like, everybody is just, it's just, uh, I'm, it's Tony Stark light at this point in Marvel. Mm. Everybody is Tony Stark light. And it's like, and it seems like now, even with the new characters, you are introducing us to new characters, but you're giving them the traits of Tony Stark's, you know, Mark Spector, he didn't have to have as many quips as he did in Moon Knight, but they gave him all those quips. And I just felt like I was watching another person trying to be Iron Man, but in Moon Knight. It's like, it's like, stop giving everybody quips. Everybody doesn't have to be a character with quips. And that was like, that's why, like, with again, going back to Blue Beetle, it's, it's their personality. It's not a quip. It's not, oh, the obvious joke here, I'm gonna make this joke. It's, Really, okay, this character would react to this way. The sister, she would be that one clowning on Jaime like that and and but also have immense love for her and family and take it the hardest because you know that's her character. Like I like their I'm reaction. Glad they didn't overdo that. I'm so glad they didn't yeah. overdo the sister yeah. being sarcastic and funny. It was yeah. like it fit when it needed to, and then she got emotional when things hurt. Mm -hmm. It wasn't overly, hey, I'm a, a attitudinal teenager. I have things yeah. to say, that, and it's like it gets annoying super fast. So the balance was there. I'm saying I was so let down by Thor four because they were clearly riding off. It, you know what it is? Friday. Next Friday, Friday after next. We all love Friday and we love the funny moments, but you forget that that movie had heart and balance and a yeah. story. Part two 
focused on everything that was funny from part one and wanted to do that in part two. And thank God for Mike Epps being so funny that it was like, all right, this, this kind of saves it, but it wasn't a better movie than part one. And in part three, had a little better of a story, but was still funny, but it wasn't as slapsticky. So what I feel that a lot of comic book films do when they are getting into their sequels is that they start relying on the things that worked from yeah. part one, and they don't give the attention to the small things that also worked in the movie, right? So yeah. Sam Jackson in part one of Iron Man, I'm, I'm sorry, how should I say this? Sam Jackson was a little bit more serious and coy in mm -hmm. the Iron Man appearance than he was as the universe continued to go. As the oh, universe yeah. continued to go, he just became Sam Jackson. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just became a whole lot yeah. of looks, became a whole lot of jokes. So yeah. when you start focusing on just the, oh, people laughed here. Let's get eight more lines like that instead of focusing on the setup of before that joke came to put in the next movie, that's where I have the trouble, if that makes sense. I feel oh, like yeah, that I think is a plague of anything that continues. Like, that's a plague of TV. That's a plague of sequels that, like, they do a focus group. They check. They do research to see yeah. what exactly did the audience like, and then they expand on it. And I, I don't think it's unique to DC. I don't think it's unique to Marvel. You know, you see a character that starts off grounded mm -hmm. and say they have one cool thing about them that we all love. And we're like all making memes about this one cool thing. Guess what? Season two, three, four, five, and six. That cool thing is going to become more and more apparent. And that yeah. like personality trait will up. Um, and I think Ragnarok, to your point, is exactly it. We love the jokes. We love, like, everything. So when Taika Waititi went into storyboarding and talking to the execs, they were like, we want more. Everything yeah. you did, we want more. And so he yeah. had to double, triple, quadruple down. They're like, we love that rock. Put that rock there. Have him narrate the whole story. We love this. We love that. And so I think a lot of that is hard to get around. It's not even just audiences. Sequels. It's the executives, to your point, executives, nine times out of 10, don't know what the fuck they're doing. And the way you get promoted to an executive is crazy. <laughs> and let yeah. me explain this to you. The way you get promoted to any position is by doing a job and either one, people like you there and somebody left that position and they're like, oh, I think you have potential. And they throw you into that, right? For example, I, if I am going to be head of development for a comic book company, I should not be uh, someone who does not know comic books, right? right? And that's how it is with these executives. So it's like executives be like, "Ooh, we want more of that." Be like, "Yeah, but that doesn't make story. That doesn't make sense for the story because, like, yeah, 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 but we want more of that." So when you look at Ragnarok, the reason Ragnarok worked on top of everything is because Dark World was so serious and trash yeah. that you're like, "Wait a minute, this is a completely different version of this character. <laughs> I like this." And so now when we can see it coming. In Love and Thunder, we're like, ah, oh, man, I thought y'all yeah. were going to switch it up and give us something we weren't going to expect. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or and I think, I think too, yeah. But then, too, yeah. like, from even the financial point of those, you see it from Thor 1 to Thor 2. It's like, okay, this William Shakespeare's tone we tried to go with ain't hit. Yeah. Ain't hit. And so, yeah, but when we got to Avengers, we saw like, oh, we see this battle, this sarcastic battle between Loki and Thor. We kind of like that a little bit more. So let's now make it to where it's like, okay, these gods interacting with these humans, which I think DC did a great job with is creating an environment to leave it open to be funny. And then mm -hmm. they started that kind of with Avengers, but because to be honest, they didn't know where to go with Thor. And when it started becoming, oh, this guy's kind of funny, you just made him a stronger Star Lord. And now you just make him yeah. a goofball. And that's, that's, that's that was my issue with the goofy aspect of it because they could have still did that of Thor, you know, having dealing with these earthlings and still having those funny moments. But when you have the moments of him being goofy, being the butt of the jokes, you know, then it's like, all right, now what you like, you're doing, you're doing a whole lot. So you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that look at that completely. Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle did not have that problem. Blue no, Beetle was perfect. No. It was perfect. D D 
Yeah, DC actually from I'm gonna say Peacemaker, Harley Quinn, and Blue Beetle definitely did not have an issue of creating an environment to leave it open for jokes. Like yeah. we knew what was we knew what was going on with Suicide Squad, but you still left it open for these characters to have personality. And it seems like yo, okay, this is how villains would talk to each other. They're sarcastic mm -hmm. assholes who don't really like each other. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're gonna be at each other's throats, and we're going to laugh at that. Same way they did with Blue Beetle. This is a kid who got an ancient piece of technology. This is right. how him and his family would naturally react to that, and they are going to have their funny moments. They did a great job at keeping that in there. So I tell just want to know, though, before we get out of here. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, TT. Tell me, because I know you would know this, Frankie. The Scarabs, where do they all come from? And is there a story where they all, I don't know, the owner unites them or comes to collect them? So they're not like tech. They're a race. They're a race of people. Uh, not people, but like, it's like a mm. tech race. So yeah. they come from a planet and they actually go to planets to conquer them. Um, so, uh, the scare goes to earth, the initial, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, assignment, the initial assignment is to take over earth, right? There's to destroy mm. the earth. So like, that's why in some iterations, and I feel like, like the early, not young justice. Yeah. Like in young justice, you'll hear mm. Kaji to say some wild shit, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah like we go on the, <laughs> yeah. Cause they're, they're supposed oh, to be like villains. But um, Jaime's will is stronger than that. So them being bonded, right? They're supposed to take over Jaime and then they take over the world and then boom, they consume it. So mm. think of them more like a world of parasites. Mm. Yo, so, so you know how that would tie in really dope for this new one is because like how to you said, CT, it reminds you of Green Lantern. So it's yeah. like... What if the Green Lantern Corps is that same thing, but they owned or and, I, and I'm gonna say this wrong, so I'm gonna have to go to you, Frankie. But the scarabs were created by the Lords of Chaos, mm. and then who are the other ones? That who are the good ones, uh, Frankie? What are their names? I forgot, but I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, that's where the Lantern Corps. Yeah, comes I, I get what you're from. saying. Think, where it's like yeah. they're, they're conflicting, and so like it's a scarab mm -hmm. war. Da da da. Y'all should really that'd be a good parallel. Today. It's only six issues. Um, Read what? Graduation day. It's oh. Blue Beetle, um, and essentially, yeah, right that's what. The, if, yeah, read Blue Beetle. But that's yeah, okay, okay. His, his scarab is acting up. Kajito Muni. He's like, "Yo, speak to me in English and Spanish. What, what's going on?" And like, and the fact that that scarab spoke Spanish at the end, I was fucking with that shit too. Yeah, that's yeah, why we yeah. Did that because Jaime. Jaime goes in and out of Spanish, so the scarab's like, nope. "Okay, I connect with you. This is gonna motivate you." Let me speak to you in your natural language, and you know I love it. Because why does it speak English? Yeah, you know, like why and does it speak what? English? And also, to not to to CT's point about not overdoing stuff. I love how they did Uncle Rudy's character because that character could have easily been the like the dumb character, the not so yeah. smart character, and they he was a genius. They, they gave yeah. him right. They gave him enough of I don't like I'm I'm raw. I'm raw to this world, but my approach to this is still, I and, still got the tech. I still know how to put shit together. I still know how yes. to make something. And I, they, they did not overdo it. I like, I love that as well. Nah, because every, every, if you know Latinos, this, they got a Rudy. Yeah, I, I just want to push out that Rudy is just a liberal in Florida. So like the stuff <laughs> that he's saying, it's like, at first we're like, he's this quirky uncle yeah. with conspiracy theories. And then we get a glimpse of the world and the world is Aliens have been introduced. I'm sure there's a Superman in this. Um, you see the city already has integrated alien tech, and that's yep. why it looks so mm -hmm. futuristic. So as you start to bring in what that world is and listen to what Theo Rudy is saying, he's spitting. But he yeah. seems ridiculous because that's what people who are woke sound like right if you are just going through the motions trying to survive you don't want to listen to theo rudy because he he's gonna make you paranoid but what yeah. theo rudy is saying is right he called they batman are tracking us fascist. they fascist. are living it he called that being a fascist i don't know which batman which is... they're doing but i will say uh Zack Snyder's Batman was a fascist <laughs> so yes yes but you I know what else Frankie yeah. you know what else you saw Rudy doing Fixing stuff. You saw him fixing DK. He was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <stop. laughs> 
<laughs> he was fixing stuff. <laughs> and he had a pickup truck. But you ain't seen no number in that pickup truck. <laughs> we, we, we ain't seen the leading feed yet either. <laughs> we don't know what Booty was doing truck, when that was The truck came back fixed. And you know what? I'm not going to hold you. I was stressed. I said, damn, I can't watch this man redo this truck. <laughs> and it was on hydraulics. I was like, ugh. I was so glad it came back together. Yeah. And so I was like, cool. Um, you're right. You're right. Is this your, <laughs> is, is this your favorite George Lopez um, um, role? I've, I'm, I've been Ooh, really thinking that? about that. Like, out of all the stuff that I've seen George Lopez, George Lopez in, I really enjoyed him in this role. Like, really enjoyed him in this role. I enjoyed him in a role, but I also, you're talking to a fan of Lopez tonight. Like, I like ah, George Lopez. Yeah. So, but this movie role, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. George Lopez is just so likable, bro. Yeah. yeah. I don't still think Spy Kids 3 is his greatest role he's ever played. What did you say? Spy Kids 3 is George Lopez's greatest role. <laughs> Facts. Facts. He was yeah. the same guy as Spy Kids. Um, Should have got him. I can't believe got they didn't get Danny uh, Trejo. With, with, did he have a conflict? <laughs> Yo. Did he have, did he have a conflict? He must be in the I, I, look, and look. I'm not gonna lie. If he'd have came and his name was Machete, I wouldn't have had no. I wouldn't have had. What if no he would have played the Red Beetle character instead of Ooh. my man? But then, then I would have been. I would have felt bad because I don't want to be high. I don't want to be high. I saw him at Awesome Con. He's like five two. Yeah, he's like five two. He's not five two. He's like five three. Yeah, he's like five three. Very tall man. Zolo's tall. Danny really? is a lot shorter than I thought. Yeah. I'm tall. I'm like five seven. Zolo um, six two. Yeah, I'm not if, if you if you look at it, yeah. yeah he's what's he's pretty tall though. Kaiser I can look it up, but yeah. he's pretty yeah. too tall. And Danny, when I, I saw Danny yeah. not even close, I was in the green room and he walked by me and sitting down, he was barely taller than me when he yeah. walked. I was like, you know, when Tory Lanez got up and that <laughs> and he was yeah. the same height. It was like, <laughs> yeah. it was That's how I felt about all of that's how I felt about Ron Perlman when I saw him and he was just like right here to me. I'm like, no. no. Tell me that. Ron Perlman. Tell Yo, it's just know. a big, it's a big ass head on the, on the short body. I'm just looking what? like, no, 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 you're no, no. boy. Will, you're, you're tall. Will, you're, you're tall. Will, you're tall. Will, you're like 6'5", right? Which is why I can't stand <laughs> Christian Bale as Batman. The bitch is 5'3". I'm not scared of you taking over Gotham. I'm gonna fuck with you yeah, like that. Then, Where is then, it? Where's the rest ah! of you? But that Ben Affleck was too tall. So I was like, No, he was the perfect Batman. Him why is he and, taller and than Cavill Superman? Was perfect Superman. They were the best ones. That's why I was Cavill like, was like, kind of short, but Cavill was an amazing Superman. He was an amazing you know, yeah, Superman. People, say, people always say that. And all I could think is, I think he looked like an amazing Superman. I thought he was a terrible Superman. Every <sighs> installment, I, he's a good actor. But the script, how could he be a good Superman when he's walking out of a building that exploded without helping? When he watches his dad die, like how can I? Frank, say he didn't watch his dad him? die. His dad told him dad to not Clark, help him no because he didn't line. want his son what, to be exposed. <laughs> no Clark Kent alive. <laughs> That's the what it is. That's not my Clark Kent dying is that it's out of his hands. Frankie, like, you know what you just did. Point it's cancer. This whole hour and a half. You made me fall in love with you and fall out of love with your ass. That's crazy. God damn it. That's crazy. But no, 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 no. Tell me, tell me what has Henry, tell me a scene that Henry Cavill did that you're like Superman. When he, when he saved in that oil rig, the oil rig, the oil rig is when I was like, that's, that's one Superman. saving something. Y'all, that's not Superman. That's not Superman. what I'm sorry. What do you think? Not, Superman? I don't even know your criteria. I need to know your criteria, he, Frankie. He, okay. So first of all, we have to remember that Superman is best. I actually, I would give y'all him the decision to kill. Uh, and that's the one I can't God give you. Is the, the only I thing that I was like, and even then we didn't get enough, but whatever. The whole point of Superman, it reminds me of black man syndrome in a white room, right? He is he has a lot of power. He knows everyone is intimidated by him. He's scared. And he is there to one, let people be comfortable, but two, to fight for the people. There's a comic book run where Superman loses his powers and he starts fighting the police, straight hands. Okay, he's fighting the Ku Klux Klan members. He's doing that. Superman is all about morality. Superman is all about people. Superman is all about saving everyone, no matter 
what right yeah okay if that okay if that's the case then you explain the south side of metropolis and why he won't even go over there to go help them out who said but superman also, we, will. Like, that, that's in the comments like Hold superman up. actually yeah. stated like yo like Hold on. i can't i got an actual the side of metropolis we we didn't get there though we didn't get the opportunity for him to explore that he so had four four appearances Okay, yeah. but, and, and in those four appearances, it was all residuals off of the first thing that ended up happening, right? And so, like, here's the thing. What you said about him being the people and making people comfortable, him showing up to that courthouse and even that whole scene of him trying to show, like, look, I don't have to be here, but I am trying to show y'all that I'm trying to work with the people. That was Superman as fuck. That, mm, that, that it was, was not. He walked away from that courthouse. when it He didn't up. walk away. The courthouse blew up. He, he, and then, what you talking it, about? It's a courthouse that just blew up. Superman stays for triage every time. Superman cleans up. Superman never leaves a scene. Superman's like, damn, this blew up. Let me search. Let me make sure there's no survivors in here. Let me make, let me get the debris out. Let me make sure what's the impact of this blast. This man blew up and said, damn, that's crazy. They was talking shit about me in there anyway. One scene. And dipped. And dipped. One scene I will say that should have happened in that. Uh, well, one thing they didn't do in Zack Snyder's Superman run for the entire thing was he never focused on his super speed. Even when they showed the, the race between he and Flash, I hate when the director shows Superman flying next to the Flash because that he has super speed as well. He can right. run just, he can run almost as fast as the Flash. So when you look at the scene in the courthouse, what should have happened was him kicking into super speed yeah. and trying to remove yeah, sure. people out and then kicking himself when there might have been one person he couldn't save. But That's the weird. writing overall did not display Superman. I mean, Henry Cavill being a great Superman. We had to look in between the lines and what he did with what he was given to be shown that he was a great Superman. Those and lines then also too super tight. And the but let's not let's not forget let's not forget though five. what Superman he was at the one you mentioned it is a veteran Superman didn't right. he like Man of Steel he just kind of learned how to yeah, fly he just, he just became so, Superman. are y'all watching still, are y'all watching my adventures of Superman I just started last night I am I am I love that it. is I, an I'm origin good. right so the, you I'm guys good. are talking about we have four hours I could kind of let y'all go for Man of Steel. But Batman v Superman was the perfect opportunity to do what I'm talking about with Superman, which is normally his biggest, um, his biggest conflict, which is that people are scared of me. And how do I do my job? But also grappling with how do I restrain myself and my power, which because I'm powerful than everyone I interact with. We did not see that in Batman v Superman. We got something. But you know different. what, too? But I but think that's Superman's fault. And but they but no, but I think they jumped too because even in Batman versus Superman, you saw more of Kingdom Comes Superman. This was one who was kind of just like, yo, I ain't, I'm not really trying to make y'all feel good. Like, and I saw that when he when the Batmobile hit him and he looked and he said, Yo, your shit done. Don't do this yeah. again. I'm like, Superman, he was arrogant. Superman will be doing that. And that's yeah, Snyder. So like, watching, well, see, that's Snyder. The whole theme Adventures of that movie was gods Man. against monsters or something like that, right? Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Like, was well, no, that's, that's, that's guns. Not like, that's guns. Yeah. Snyder was turning everybody into a Kryptonian. It was a mess. Yeah. Uh, but you watch my adventures as Superman, right? What are you mm -hmm. noticing about Superman? You're what you're watching that he cares about the people. He's if discovering a, his powers. He's discovering his yeah. powers. As you get further, don't say he's it. getting stronger. No, no, these are right, spoilers. Cool. As he's getting stronger, as he's interacting, as he's seeing who can he save, what's his conflict? I need to save everyone, right? It's yeah. it's the it's the across the Spider Man's question, uh, Spider Verse question. Peter Parker and most of DC uh, heroes are I should save everyone. I'm here to save everyone. That scene where Jonathan Kent said no, and Superman listened. I checked out from then on. But that, that's what you have to understand. And I understand. I'm not trying to change your mind, but I'm just yeah. trying to explain that part in the movie. Kevin Costner loved his son so much that he already knew what would happen if anybody were to see his son do anything heroic like that. Like, how the fuck did you just save him Cap. from that? Did you say Cap? Cap. It was <laughs> stupid. 
was stupid. Because to your stupid. point, CT, to your point, CT, super speed. Super, super speed. He would have And you could and you would have had to say speed. shit. But and they didn't showcase the super right speed. There. So if he moved him, right? If he grabbed Jonathan Kent and took him home, right? People would have thought that Jonathan Kent got caught up in it. What would have happened? I don't there was it was a tornado there. There were so many ways they could have out explained. Jonathan Kent surviving it instead of it versus him not surviving and his son surviving. That takes more explanation. Hey, how did you survive this? We saw you out there too. Cat, it was stupid. He was like, his father needs to, is this camera on me? His father is <laughs> dumb. <laughs> it was dumb. It didn't make any sense. Jonathan Kent, he just was like, Zack Snyder read somewhere, Jonathan Kent needs to die. And he said, "How do John, I do? He, I need to he read Spider Man. He was watching Spider Man. He read Spider Man. Like, Yo, you know but, and even with Spider Man, that's a different lesson that comes. It is. Right? It is. But in this case, for it to be, Superman was right there, and his dad said no, and he said, "Damn, Dad, I love you. Goodbye." Doesn't make any sense. That's why I like Dean Cain Superman really, better, bro. Yeah, Dean Cain Superman anybody, had his parents for a long time. And I, I don't think it's yeah. Henry Cavill's fault. I think it's, it's not. Zach's, I think it's Zach Snyder's it is. fault. One thousand percent. One hundred percent. Well, one thousand percent. This new yeah. kid, y'all gonna forget about when you get the new bitch. Y'all gonna forget, and no, I'm gonna be right here. I'll be right here. Oh, when y'all get that new on your tongue, and you, I'm open to it. I just don't know much about it. Oh yeah, yeah, open to it. Copy, copy. Let's cut this for later. Don't make it into a reel. <laughs> Okay, I just want to wait until this movie puts the put this on the drive so that I can get y'all all in t- three years when it drops, four years probably now because of the strike yeah. when it drops. I'm gonna be y'all gonna be like, whoa, I really love this guy. He's better than Henry Cavill. And I'll be like, I know, because it was written by somebody who likes Superman, and this cat looks just like Henry Cavill. That's all you needed. All we saw was the face. We didn't see it Man, hey. you done. Well, Frankie, I, I don't think I don't think none of us is against sure. him. I don't think none of us is against him. We just say an as of now, we we fuck with Henry Cavill. <laughs> Here's the answer that I have to your question. We fuck with Henry Cavill because as comic book fans, there are several actors that get cast in these roles and they might fit the role. And after that first movie and they got their money and they got their fame, they start saying, I don't know how long I'll play this character. Henry Cavill is someone who got the character. He got the role and he said, I want to play Superman forever. He was excited to play Superman. He wanted to do as many appearances as he could playing Superman and the studio wouldn't allow him to. So as fans, we saw the hero and Superman and Clark Kent qualities in this character in this real man that we were like, he wants to be here. While at the same time, you know, no disrespect to Ben Affleck, he's like, yo, man, I don't know if I'm gonna be super, I'm Batman anymore. I don't know if I wanna do this. I don't know if I wanna do that. Then you see other actors saying, yeah, it's time for these things to kind of end. But we see this guy with the role of a lifetime saying, I want to be this guy and the studio isn't letting me. So when he got a chance to appear in Black Adam, the reason we all erupted is because we're like, finally, somebody who wants to be here. Right. That's why we love him as Superman. Now, if this think, next actor is fair. that guy, then cool. That's fair. So and, y'all love Henry Cavill. Yes. Oh yeah. Not, yeah. not the Henry, not the Superman Henry Cavill played. Y'all think like well, I hate know, the black well, women no, listen to, to everything. Like, well, no, no, to, <laughs> no, no, hold on, no, because I wanted to get to that. To that, to add to that, this man also gave us multiple different versions of Superman. You True. can see him as the one that don't have powers. We were still behind him. You saw him as the one that you have, again, like kind of the kingdom come where he's a little bit more seasoned. He gave us a glimpse of like, okay, if you gave us a story of how he got to that, cool. You even showed us the evil version of Superman where this dude was knocking people heads off. And we're just like, oh, yeah, I'd hate to see him. The only one we didn't get was long-haired Superman. So it was like to see Mm -hmm. him, even though he didn't have movies, we got to see him in different iterations of it. Let us know. It's just like, yo, this is a dude that's a great Superman that y'all just did not take advantage of. And so, and again, it doesn't go, it's not to say nothing about the other guy and stuff like that, but it's just like, yo, you, you, you got a lot you got to bring to the table, but bring it into your own journey. Like you don't have to top cap. Yeah. Just give us the Superman that y'all are trying to have for James Gunn's story and make that shine bright. You know what I want to see for once? I want to see superheroes that 
how do you say it? You know how this guy who's playing Superman now, he's playing a super young Superman, so he's going to be like thin and all of that shit. I want to see a superhero movie where these motherfuckers are as yoked as I am. Like, I want to see these motherfuckers be massive and really fighting each other. I'm tired of seeing these bony ass motherfucking superheroes. I want to see a thick ass Miss Marvel. You understand me? I want to see Miss <laughs> Marvel be like she is when we go to these comic cons. <laughs> like yams. I'm talking about both. I want to see the women both. be thicker and I want to I see need, the men yeah. be meaty with the guns, bro. Like I feel, that's why I like Ben you Affleck as Batman. You bigger than Chris Evans. You bigger than Ben Affleck as yeah. Than Henry Cavill. Chris, first of all, the only person who probably got me. This is what I want. I want you to think wrestlers. Don't just think about Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck is a very thin man. I want you to look at Bobby and Lashley. Batman, he was not. <laughs> He was not big. He was not small in Batman. Batman versus Superman. He was he was yoked as fuck. When I'm talking about in regular walking around life, he's a very thin man. But when yeah. you look at Bobby Lashley, you look at somebody like uh like Roman the Reigns, Rock. Yeah. The Rock. Like I want to see people like The Rock in these superhero roles. If you yoked, all right, um, yoked. If you, if you are, if you have super strength, yes, you, there's not much that you can do to create the resistance to yoke yourself up like that. You know what you're doing? You're being realistic, and I don't need it. I need <laughs> I'm just confused on where you're going with this. I was like, uh, I want, I, we want the comic accurate. What are they listening? Oh, listening? We want the com what are they listening? I want it I all. I want to see just like be thicker because they'd be like a hundred pounds. And well, like but look at they, I know what CT saying because like okay. John Stewart is a character that's not yoked in like real life, but he has that superhero physique where it's kind of like that upside down John triangle. John Stewart got dad bod. No, he got that upside down triangle. He still got the broad show. Like if you look at the animated nah, she, series, she's thinking of the animated series. That's what she going yeah. with this one. <laughs> like no, you got to think Michael J. White. Yeah, every like, superhero yeah. should be like, built like Michael J. White. White. And guess what? Yes. He's not a good actor. I'll beat your ass. Michael Jai White. <laughs> I love his that is, movies. He's a national treasure. <laughs> Michael Jai White movies. is an incredible I actor. I think he's a great martial artist, okay? And I haven't seen Who do you think is a good actor then? Let's think that. If you say Michael Jai White is not a good actor, who do you think is a good Spawn? actor? Spawn ain't a good actor? I, Spawn. I thought Spawn was great. I thought it was no, I don't, Who do you I think is a good um, actor? Wesley Snipes is a good actor. He is phenomenal. Ali. He is. Is a great actor. Um, I mean, there's a lot. I do think Ben Affleck is a good actor. I thought Zolo was a good actor. Um, and you don't think Michael Jai Zolo. White? I feel Zolo get it too. I think now this is the thing. I think he's great in Black Tame It. Like, uh, what is it? The one where he's like Sheila. I don't even got a look, and he's like a pimp. Like Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite. Just... I think he's good in that. And hey, like, yeah. it's time to it's time to end the show. I think he's yeah. Let's, let's I have done, bro. Anyway, she I gotta go. go anyway, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't even y'all rewatch Spawn. You got to go. Look, Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite. Look at Tyson. He, that was his first film. That was his first leading role. Look at Tyson. Look at him on a guest star of Saved Tyson. by the Bell. He Tyson. is an actor. Toxic Avenger. That was his first feature. Toxic Avenger. Mm -hmm. Universal Soldier. Universal Listen, you talking to a Michael Jai White stand. Man, bro. This I, is a Michael Jai White right here. Stand Blood and Bone? Right here. Blood and Blood Bone. And I've been asking him to do a sequel to that for years. Copy, copy. Undisputed before he got All the, the stuff y'all been complaining about right now or like earlier in the show, like are rampant in Michael J. J. White's movies. Hey, hey, Frankie. Hey, delete my number. <laughs> she ain't got my number. Don't delete my number. <laughs> I'm just asking for the same energy across the board. That's why it always be anarchy like... in your comics, Frankie. Like I said, <laughs> like CT is, CT's introduction to you is why it be anarchy in your comics. People love you at first, and then you say some crazy stuff like bro, this. And then like, she oh, took me on a journey. Me. You gotta love all of me, okay? If she you took me on a journey, bro. All one thing. If I'm consistent, okay? <laughs> If you like I had hearts in my eyes, bro. I had hearts in my eyes. I was planning a retirement Ooh. community for us, and then she just <laughs> came up. Like, with no, this bro, the only one I've been <laughs> hey, listen here. I've been doing I've been doing content with CT for about a about a year and a half now. CT ain't never asked me, Are do you live in LA? He asked you that immediately. immediately. I, <laughs> I feel you didn't even start, and he was he like, You in the group chat. I'm and like, he's like, like, I don't even got a meter. I don't even got a meter. But Will Will and I have hung out plenty of times. He knows. I'm just saying, 
<laughs> yeah. So, yo, so it's just New York the same energy, and people just yes. want you to to give exceptions. <laughs> Absolutely not. Black she and white. She broke my heart, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, she Black be crying, but I say this. He'll back it up, though. That's what I love about it, to be like, I want to be so mad at you, and I'm even more mad because you kind of got a point, and I'm seeing where you're coming from, and I don't like well, that. I, I don't need you converting. No, take a stand. Mm-hmm. Stop converting. I, I gave mean, her all her problems. I'm a lord of chaos, until, sir. Lord of chaos. chaos. You are a lord of chaos. Until she said to Michael J. White, that's where I was right. like, oh. I love him. I think he is a pillar of our community. I love most of the movies that he's in. I don't want to hear the <laughs> That's how you know you don't when you start off anything with like that. I think he's a pillar to the community. It's That's the, the professional way of he ain't it's, he a, gets. it's a compliment sandwich, yo. Michael Jai White should have been Marshall War Machine. Artists. He should have been uh, Bishop. He also should have been John Stewart Green Leonard. He still could be. Still could and be. Uh, who else? Those were his perfect three for me. Yeah. Bron Sager um, isn't I bad, like, oh. but. Blue Marvel. I can see him be Blue Marvel. Mm. I can see him. I need to know what Black Man in Session is over Blue, Mar- Blue Marvel because, like, he sucks. He's not a nice person. Cause, like, his story is. Because we don't have a lot. Like, yeah, we, we don't have a lot. We don't have a lot of people. He's a Republican. Like y'all, y'all fuck with Republicans? He's a misogynist. He's a Republican. He's a. Y'all I like mean, that? So, is Batman. so is Batman, and we fuck with him. That man is a Republican. So is Tony. Tony's a fashion. Okay, that's and he's a drunk. Y'all be, push, y'all be pushing. I just don't hear this energy for Black Lightning. I don't you know what Black Lightning? Here's the problem with Black Lightning. Who has Rocket there to balance off and for him to learn and to be less, to be more tolerant. It's I want to see an icon Marvel movie. With his I do want to see an icon. No, no, no. We, we, we Black, Black Lightning, the problem, and I'll even go with the show. The problem with that show, and shout out to uh, Mara Brock Akil and Salim Akil, but the problem with that show was, one, they focused on a part of Black Lightning that was not conducive to the audience that they were serving. When you're on the CW, you're dealing with teenage girls, white teenage girls and teenage boys. Now, when you are presenting something like this, you need to start him off without any attachments you need to start him out with his own origin story and maybe him being a kid and then him becoming black lightning you don't start him as a middle-aged father and principal on the cw network that would have worked on showtime but it's not going to work on the cw uh, so when you. you started like that and then you focus more on uh his daughters it's like listen i understand and i support black women like anybody else but you're giving mixed messages you can't call this show black lightning and not focus on black lightning that's another problem with the flash you tell me yeah the flash is gonna be in every other episode this season what the fuck are you talking about yeah, this is the flash i'm not here to see his friends bro so when i see black <laughs> Lightning, <laughs> i'm not here to see his friends they showed his daughters they showed him being broken down and that you can't start a franchise like this where I'm supposed to be behind this title character. You got to show me him in his prime, him extremely excited about fighting crime, and you did not show me any of that. And then on top of that, the last season and a half, you got political with your views. Like, the thing about comic book shows and movies is, is escapism. We want to escape our normal realities and problems to go into this reality. And when you show me a reality and your reality that is similar to mine, I'm like, fam, I don't, that's another reason Love and Thunder pissed me off. I don't want to see somebody die from cancer when my father died of cancer. When I'm looking at Black Lightning, I don't want to see children being locked in cages because in real life, we're seeing kids be locked in cages. So when you give me something, Give me the escapism that's fire and give me something that I can see and be behind. A lot of shows on the CW work because it's youth involved. Cut to all American working because, yes, this is a network that likes to uh, to pander to young white girls, but they also love young black boys in the white world. And that's why this worked. <laughs> and then, like, uh, to CT's point I... real quick, it just... Hold on, uh, no, let her respond. Oh, okay. Yeah, Comic yeah. books as a genre is to make real life issues palpable to the masses. The it's political by nature. Oh yeah, yeah, but we don't like that. That just just because it's just because that's the norm doesn't mean we gotta accept it. It's not the you norm. I mean, I, I, I'm not. I, 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 hold on. I, hold on. We'll, yeah, yeah, I gotta let her finish. Yeah, it's not the norm. Finish. It's about it's it's not the norm. It's the genre. Like if you, I don't know what to tell you. Like that's the genre. The entire genre is to shine a light. Now. It may be triggering 
I, I get that. Like that's triggering or it may be something you're not interested in. Um, but that's the nature of it. Right. So it's supposed to show a light. These are struggles that's going on in the real world. I'm going to slap some aliens on it so that you can, so we can get this message out, but right. it's always so, been right. political. <laughs> like when you said Supergirl got political, I'm like, Superman is political. That's the whole thing. Oh, no, no, no. And what I mean, to elaborate, like, to elaborate on that yeah. part of Supergirl, what I mean is Supergirl they, they start, trans, you wasn't no, 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 no. I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm always going to support uh, the LGBTQ and anybody who wants to be comfortable within their skin. I don't give a fuck about that. The thing that I'm talking about political wise is We've said this on this show for almost a year and a half now. Make great characters, right? I loved, for an example, the movie Salt with Angelina Jolie, right? I loved Atomic Blonde. Give me a strong character. Don't tell me, oh, I'm strong because I'm a woman. I don't want to hear that stupid shit. Just give me a good character. Supergirl started doing the political shit. The first thing that pissed me off is when they brought in. Now, I want you to think of every actor who's played Superman. They were tall. They were strong. They were manly. No disrespect to Tyler Hecklin because they've done their best to try and rebuild his character as Superman from another dimension, you know, another world. But when they showed his Superman on Supergirl, they made him subservient to Supergirl. She was taller than him. She beat him in these battles. Now, I'm not saying that Supergirl isn't stronger than Superman. I'm saying that the way they did it was literally disrespecting the legacy of Superman. That was the first thing. The That's second the thing. That's the legacy of Supergirl, that she's more powerful, she's stronger. I just said bigger, that. She's My point so is this. Yeah. When they got to, when they started doing more and more, hey, you're a woman. You're stronger than everyone. It was like, fam, can we just just give the story? You don't they need to do, do shit like that. That's yeah, politics. They do that with male characters literally all when the time. When you see the male there's character race and hey, a you're a boy. Jitsu, the, the verbiage is this different. But no. I think the verbiage In male is stories, they don't show a male being like, hey, you get up because you're a man and you're strong. What? That is not. No, that's what they do all the time. They just Give don't it to say. Me. They just don't say it like straight out. That's they my say, point. They're not saying that. I think that's what, I think that's what he's true. getting to. Yeah, he doesn't. That, it doesn't in get any alien. story, people, it doesn't get women, said. They just show it. Like show me men. a good story because and a good character. Men. Because they're men. No. So if that's the case, give me a woman character that is written just like a male character, and you'd be like, yo, that's fire. Wonder Woman 1 was incredible, and not once did they say, hey, you're a wonderful woman. You, as a woman, are better than men. They just showed her being dynamic in everything she did, and that's why we got behind her character. When you start pandering to an audience just to get a casual viewer to come in and be like, hey, I'm a woman. I'm going to watch this show. That's when you start being trash with the storyteller. That's but my I point in saying it's political. Wonder Girl. Woman to CW, CW, that's their calling card. To look at you, Barry Allen, every episode, that's what he's doing in The Flash. They're like, you're Barry Well, that's Allen. why, to CC's point, he stopped fucking with The Flash. Yeah, 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 you man, stopped, I, yeah. Stopped. I don't think, I, I mean, just to, just to single out Supergirl and on the CW when everyone in the CW verse goes through that language. I no, no, no. I was only answering your question. I get it, but no, but for I'm Supergirl. For but Supergirl. But I, if you want to know my true thoughts, over to everything. If you want to know my pro first of all, I know you got to get out of here, but you my problem with out, DC Legends of Tomorrow after. was trash. Yeah. The problem the with the Flash world, after DC season Legends three. Tomorrow after season one was trash. Trash. Listen, after trash. season one, they lost their way. Say they didn't get sick. The reason they built the show was to make it seem like they were doing a Justice League type show. They're like, we're doing team ups, we're doing larger than life V situations, we're doing guest stars, they and the what they ended up doing society on there. That which, was seasons season? later once they realized that they were losing yeah. their audience. Season two. Hold on, which season with a big bear came in? Which one was that? That was season four. Yeah. That's when they lost it. Everything else was dope. Yeah, After right. that happened, yeah. that's when I was like, no, nah, I I love the Justice Society. The problem with the Justice Society is they only showed two, I think three members where you're like, who the fuck was this guy? They kept away from showing the members that you actually wanted to see, like uh, the the lantern of that world. They kept away from showing, um, I think they showed Our Man and they showed Black Star Cat. Girl. Yes, yeah, and Star Girl, but barely. It's like, come on, man. And that so, wasn't enough to save the series for me. I'm sorry. Like, no. just, just because you got a, a, a fire moment, don't mean that the whole series is going to. That series was. Trash. They kept going I, to the I, past, was, and I'm like, was bro. PC's echo. 
That was DC. When they show. went that to the DC. future and saw old man Oliver, it's like, oh, if you keep this up, this is going to be incredible. And then they had a storyline with a flash. Something happened with him in like 2025 or 2048. Mm-hmm. They never revisited that. Like, I was like, I'm out of here for DC Legends tomorrow. Supergirl got political. I was out of there. Flash got trash after Savitar. Then when I watched Arrow, Arrow brought itself back in season um, five and six. And I was like, ooh. But all these shows start going through the same BS. I was with Black Lightning until that last season and a half. And I was like, I'm out of here. And I'm somebody who never quit any show. And the CW changed me. So I love I love Black Lightning character as a comic character, right? The show for and this is this is my sole take on why I never uh, attached to the show is that to what CT was saying, I got more interested in the daughters, and so now go. the dad didn't seem. Hold on, Frankie, get your shit off. Nate. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then oh. I gotta go too because I gotta hop yeah. on the call. Right, okay, I'll, 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 I'll make this quick. I'll make this real quick, yeah. but it's like. His character never seemed as cool as the comics and the and the animation to me. And, uh. and then, so, so because of that, I never latched onto it. I just kept on. And then I got it. Well, you know, you know how how we as as you know y'all as comedians and just as black folk. After a while, we start turning things into jokes. So now I was even called on Black Light. I'm like, that's Khadija's mm-hmm. boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? That's how I only saw him because I'm like, y'all did not make him cool enough. Khadijah's boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Khadijah's boyfriend wild him out here, man. Right. <laughs> but now, yeah, like, Scooter. Like, yeah. Right? It's Scooter with lightning. <laughs> but, hey, but I hate to, to, to cut this, man, because but I was so glad to have like Frankie on here and CT on here mm-hmm. at the same time. And just about the show, like, yeah, because it's good energy. As you can see, everybody was excited. It was really oh, yeah. vibrant and stuff like that in here. And so, yo, you're going to get to see that a lot more because, like I said, I do love when especially DC fans get to come in and really be able to have a point in the stand because y'all don't have a lot right. of places where y'all get to talk. And yeah. so I was glad. Man, that, <laughs> yeah, that, as you can see, that's why I didn't really say much because I, I kind of turned into a fan. I'm just like, Yo, y'all, y'all in it. This is this is amazing. But I want to know what y'all in the audience think, man. What did you think about Blue Beetle? What did you think about the direction that the DCU is going in? Yeah, yeah. What, what you what you got, Deuce? We we let's give a ranking first. We never gave our ranking on the overall movie. We just went in talking. We we yeah. have we have no time for that. I have missed. Okay. It. I had another, <laughs> I had another no meeting at two o'clock. I had another oh, meeting man, at two my, o'clock. My, 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 my. We, uh, we, we out. Man. No, no, no Thank worries. Y'all. We will definitely get that, man. Appreciate y'all.